What's up, fellas? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the LA Lakers. And I actually don't think, I could be wrong, but I don't think we've done like a full Lakers video all season long. They've just been kind of chilling. They've been kind of in the background. But that's really the whole point of the video is the fact that there's really no reason to believe that the Lakers are anything but a really, really good team and the most trustworthy team in the league right now. If I had to pick one team that I thought was the best team in the league to feel really, really confident about, I would right now be picking the LA Lakers. And we're going to be talking about why in today's video. But quickly, before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. If you're new here, what's up? My name is Tucker. Uh, I upload NBA content twice a day, every day, so it's a great place for consistent NBA content, including something I put up earlier today, which is the Ben Simmons trade machine video. If you guys missed that, that one went up earlier today. You can also leave a like rating on the video as well if you're enjoying the content. It helps me out a ton. It helps get the video out to more people on YouTube, and you can check me out at various socials at the bottom of the screen that are in a link tree down in the description below. With those things said, let's talk about the LA Lakers. So basically, Basically, the, the whole point of this video is to say that, you know, the, really the only team that I feel really good about right now is the Lakers, because with, with all the weird circumstances of the season, it's hard to find a team to trust, right? People ask me all the time, oh, who do you think is going to win the title? Who do you think is the favorite? Who do you think is the best team in the league? And my default answer has been the Lakers. It's the only team that I feel confident about because there are just so many changes happening throughout the league, whether it be, you know, teams not having all their players available, whether it be, you know, teams playing against other teams that don't have all their players available or all the craziness happening, happening in Brooklyn right now where their roster is going through massive changes in the middle of the season. Uh, there's some drama on some other teams that are supposedly contenders. There are some underperforming teams that are supposed to be at the top of the standings that are not. And at the end of the day, once you trace through all those things, you kind of just come to the conclusion that this is still the Lakers league. And there's no reason to think otherwise after they are coming off of a title and people like to poke holes in the title because it was in Disney World and things like that. But it's a legitimate title and they're a really, really good basketball team. And they're just kind of cruising through the year. Like they're not really putting in like massive amounts of effort to be this good either. Uh, they're just kind of chilling. They're fifth in offensive rating. They're first in defensive rating. And AD and LeBron are both playing significantly less minutes this year than they did last year by about a you know a minute and a half to two minutes a game, which doesn't sound like a ton, but on the entire season, that's a lot more rest than these guys were getting a year before. I think they're more comfortable now with each other. The supporting cast is more confident as a result of winning the title, which is not an abnormal thing. And just the roster is better. Like they have guys that can create offense for this group, uh, you know, so that AD and LeBron don't have to be on the floor a ton. And when they are on the floor, they don't have to do everything all the time as they had to do at times last season. So like Montrez Harrell can go out there and have a big game offensively and AD doesn't have to do a ton. Dennis Schroeder can be out there and facilitating and LeBron can just be kind of chilling for some of his minutes on the floor. Uh, other, you know, role player guys like Caruso and Taylor Horton Tucker and Kyle Kuzma and all these other guys, their confidence is just high right now. Like they just, they know what to do. They know how to play and they're just continuing to do that every single night. And it's impressive. Like it, it's an impressive uh, start to a season that, as I said, has had such a weird context to this point uh, that has continued to allow them to just chug right along. And, you know, if you really think about it and you look at the standings and you look at teams that maybe you're thinking are, are going to be really good this season, I don't know how you would pick any of them over the Lakers right now. I still think that the Clippers are really talented, but you can't pick them over the Lakers right now considering uh, the postseason from last year, right? Uh, Denver's down at the bottom of the standings. The Mavs are having some, some issues as well. Utah's near the top, but I don't know that anybody is necessarily taking them seriously right now. And then the Eastern Conference, it's a complete mess. Like Boston hasn't played games in forever. When they did come back, they got pummeled by the Knicks. Uh, the Bucks don't have as good of a record as you would have thought. The Nets are still trying to figure out their stuff. Philly is up in the air because Ben Simmons basically got traded, but didn't get traded. And he's unhappy about that. The Heat and Raptors are down near the bottom of the standings. The Pacers traded Oladipo and Al Levert isn't playing. And it's just like, you look around the league and you just kind of default right now to the Lakers. Now, will that be the case by the end of the season? I'm not sure. Uh, one thing that I do know is I'm not counting against LeBron until proven otherwise, like until I physically see it with my own eyes that he is declining. I am assuming that he is still one of the best players in the entire league. Uh, I am also assuming as well that Anthony Davis is going to be the do-it-all guy for this team, and he's going to put up incredible numbers. And if they really wanted to, and they wanted to play him more minutes, if they wanted to play him 35, 36 minutes a game, I think Anthony Davis would have a legit MVP case. Uh, right now, he does not, just because the stats are great, but they're not like MVP level great, you know, over the level of some of the other guys that are in contention for the award right now. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, I don't think you can bet against those two guys. I think that in most postseason series, they have, I mean, honestly, 
arguably every postseason series, depending on the matchup, I guess, and depending on your own opinion, they have by far the two best players on the court. You know what I mean? And, you know, the other guys are so much more comfortable now playing alongside those guys, more so than at any time in LeBron's career uh, in LA. So, there, there's just there's just nothing to bet against. Like we can get to the postseason if they play a team that wants to go a little bit bigger, they can do that. Marcus Hall and Anthony Davis in the front court, um, you know, and they can figure it out from there. Maybe AD and Harrell in the front court, and then if teams want to go smaller, they have the best small ball lineup in the league because LeBron plays the four, the four, AD plays the five. They're still massive, but they're small and they're skilled, and that's that's the lineup that nobody has an answer for right now, uh, whether that be in the East or the West. You know, if you want to say. Well, the Nets are the biggest, you know, contender to them right now because they have all this talent. Well, defensively, Anthony Davis is going to be a problem to guard regardless, but especially when your primary defender on him is DeAndre Jordan and there aren't really a ton of other options on the on the team. Same thing when it comes to a wing defender for LeBron. I don't know who's supposed to defend LeBron unless KD is going to be playing, you know, defense on LeBron for 35 minutes a night or Jeff Green is going to do some things, I guess. Um and, you know, you know, in terms of teams in the West, like who's guarding AD in the postseason? Is Jokic, is, is Gobert guarding KD? Is Kristaps Porzingis guarding KD in the playoffs? I, I, I don't think that that is a, a problem that many teams, if any, have found a solution to for this team is they can go big the entire year and they can pummel teams with their size and they can do that in the postseason still. But as I said, they have the best small ball lineup in the league when they really want to break it out. And that's the scary thing about this group is they're top five in, in uh, offensive rating, first in defensive rating, and they're really not trying that hard. Like if they really turned it on, they could probably win like 14 of their next like 17 games or something like they're 12 and four and their foot isn't even all the way down. It's not even close. Like they could, you know, pretty easily turn this into a really, really, really good regular season if they want to. But I don't think they're going to, nor do I think they should, because the priority for this team always and every LeBron team is the postseason and about getting to where you need to get to and then putting your foot on the gas. And he has shown time and time again that that is something that he has borderline perfected, uh, an ability to just be really good throughout the regular season while not, you know, uh, using too much of his energy. And then when he gets to the postseason, he just he has a switch and they're a completely different team when he's rocking and rolling at full strength. And so this is a team that I would be afraid of. Uh, I am afraid of as a Nets fan, and we will kind of see um, what ends up with them by the end of the season, because I, I, I don't think that anybody right now that's having a realistic conversation with someone else or with themselves can pick anybody other than the Lakers right now as the title favorite. Uh, they've been far and away the most impressive team in the league to this point in my opinion. But that is going to be the end of the second video today. And I thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. As I said in the beginning, I upload super consistently twice a day, every day. So if you're looking for consistent NBA content, you found a great place to be. You can also leave a like rating on the video as well. And check me out at various socials at the bottom of the screen that are in a link tree down in the description below. With all those things said, hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you all next time.